Aloha. Welcome to the Senate Spotlight. Uh, we'll be focusing on the IA and Pearl City communities, and I really thought um, that it would be great to have the opportunity to talk about IA Intermediate School, which is one of the best performing schools in our community, and we are so fortunate in the IA community uh, to have um, dedicated and hardworking uh, educational professionals who really take responsibility for uh, teaching our children. Uh, my guest today will be Tom Kuroshige, who's um, the 2011 Masayuki Tokioka Excellence in School Leadership Award winner, from, uh, who's currently the principal at Aya Intermediate School. And we also have Robert Tabihe, who turned out being the, is it 2011? Yes. Uh, Nas National History Day uh, Award winner. So thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Thank you. For thank you. I did want to just uh, take this opportunity to really just talk a little bit about Aya Intermediate School. Um, you know, Tom, I remember when you first started there, we had a conversation, and the school wasn't uh, doing as good as uh, it could. And you know, now Aya ends up being one of the best performing middle schools in our state. And I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about that and about uh, you guys. Your stand, current standing in No Child Left Behind is um, meeting AYP and. Yes. Unconditional, um, in good standings. Okay. okay, so that really, um, in the No Child Left Behind kind of parlance, that means that you're hitting all the targets for yes. uh, student achievement. Yes. Yeah, yes. So can you just talk a little bit about, you know, some of how, how you guys are focused on trying to get that done? Meeting AYP. Yeah. Um, I think from very early on, I would say at least, eight to ten years ago, um, before it was even required to do um, quarter exams, our school already initiated a system of doing quarter exams. So each of the academic core, English, social studies, math, and science, were required to do a common assessment for all seventh grade students in each one of the um, academic course, and the eighth grade teachers were also required to do that. And what we did was we tracked the student achievement over the, the full quarters. And so that really kind of helped us get organized and, and, and start to target those areas that we thought um, students need to improve on. Perhaps Bob could talk better from the teacher's perspective in terms <laughs> of what they had to do. Yeah, so we were tasked to create individual tests, quarterly tests, and we used it to actually um, assess where our students are. And wherever the deficits are, we tried to um, adjust our teaching to a address those deficits so we could bring the kids up to uh, speed. Okay, and, and, and you guys started this like way before it was actually yes. required by the department. Yes. Uh, that, so was that just trying so that you guys could be focused about student it, achievement? It, it did a couple of things. It, it targeted where the student needs were. Because the test was common, that, which, that means that all eighth grade social studies use the same tests. Yeah. You know, all eighth grade English teachers use the same test. That also showed us where the discrepancy across the department laid in terms of the teaching, so we could get, you know, more uniform in terms of addressing those those challenging areas for students. So what that did was, I think, it gave us some real impetus in terms of um, moving forward school wide, having every one of the teachers feeling responsible for the student outcomes, um, mm -hmm. because you know what, everybody has to be successful in order for the school to be successful. We can't just have one or two teachers producing great results. Um, so you know, this way, I, I, I think um, it really gave us this educational framework to work towards that. Terrific. And maybe if you can talk a little bit about the demographics of the school, because I mean, I, I do know you have a, a pretty large population of free and reduced lunch. So this mm -hmm. isn't like it's a it's a very affluent community where the expectation is that all kids can perform, right? Yeah. We, we have a large um, population that comes from public housing, the, um, the Ho Hawaiian Housing Authority that's around the Halawa housing area. Um, we have um, a series of low-income housing areas. Um, we do have our um, middle-class um, families. So. Families that are pretty affluent, in all honesty, usually kind of opt to go to another um, school or to private schools to, to, to educate their child. So that pretty much is our clientele in terms of this, the economic demographics. 
Um, in terms of ethnic diversity, um, I would say we have a lot of Hawaiian, part Hawaiians, Filipino population. We have um, Micronesians is a growing uh, population now. Um, one of the things that's happening, I think in the past two or three years, is we were seeing a larger influx of um, white students um, from military families that we had, you know, previously not seen before, but I think little by little the word is trickling out that we are a high performing school and we have some perhaps uh, programs in addition to our academic program that may be of interest to their children like drama and dance and things like this. So um, pretty much we have, um, I would say it's very ethically diverse, um, yeah. And, and you know, uh, those, um like the free and reduced lunch or the minority groups are really where a lot of the other schools are having a hard time meeting AYP. So are you guys doing anything that's different? Or I mean, how, how is it that given the population, the student population that you have at IA Intermediate School, you're able to achieve where you're meeting AYP um, and, and being in good standing? I think Mr. Kurishigi has a, a model, uh, uh, failure is not an option. And what we try to do is we try to um, instill that in our students. And what I can tell you, what I've noticed, where our students who do transfer in from other schools, um, sometimes uh, so they, they're not ready for the rigor of our school. But what happens is because the majority of the kids have accepted that philosophy like failure is not an option, that they realize that they have to work they accept it and they start working and they're amazed at the at the success that they uh, they achieve and i think that's part of the whole culture because that's not you know that's one of the things we instill on the kids but the teachers also believe in that that they were willing to work as hard as they can to get the kids to work so i think that has a lot to do with mr kurshige's leadership and as well as we have a curriculum coordinator who works really hard in making sure that everybody's on the same page in terms of rigor. So that's pretty good. I think in terms of rigor, you, you can set, I think, high benchmarks for rigor. But it's not about setting the benchmarks. I mean, it's about assisting students to achieve them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's where the people resources that we have in our school makes us special. Um, I think Bob and a lot of teachers are really modest, but in our school, we have before school study hall, after school study hall. Um, we have um, a system where if you need individual tutors, we can set up a system where you would get individual tutoring. But when you look at our teachers and they're in the classrooms during the mornings and during recess and during lunch and after school, um, helping kids, um, Bob will tell you that he'll come in on Saturday to help students and things like this. I mean. You know, um, these students have a lot of challenges, and and to have a body of professionals, both faculty and staff, that invests so much time, effort, and resources. I mean, I think that's that's the key. That really is. Well, I think you know, speaking as a legislator who represents the area, I can just tell you that I feel very fortunate yes. for the faculty and staff at IA Intermediate School. Clearly. Um, you know, performance of the school has been off the chart. Uh, the thing that's always amazed me, though, it's more than the academics. You know, I mean, the physical facilities um, have been upgraded tremendously. Mm -hmm. I know that there's lots of effort by the custodial staff, and uh, there has been a transformation of the physical facilities. And then um, it's not all only about academics. You know, you guys have all kinds of graphics arts and, and um, art programs, performing arts. Game can room. you talk? Yeah, can you talk a little bit about those things? Because you know what has happened in other areas when when they focus on the, the outcomes of high stakes testing, you know, a, a lot of those other extracurricular things kind of go away. But at at IA Intermediate, it's blossomed and expanded even more than just the academic. So can you just talk a little bit about some of your thinking you. and, and and some of the programs that you have? Philosophically, I think as a school, we believe that you can't educate a student until you engage the student. So no matter how sincere you are about educating a student, unless the student is a willing participant, it's real difficult to, to teach someone. 
So in our school, we, we do a lot of things like um, we have a game room that's pretty, um, pretty sophisticated and, and pretty well equipped. We have um, tons of clubs and activities. Every teacher is responsible for a, a club activity or, or coaches. So we have things from the manicure club where kids learn how to put on makeup and, and, and nail polish to hula dance. We have a drama program. We have flag football, intramurals program, we have tennis. Um, we have a ton of things that kids find really um, engaging. It kind of gears to their interests and talents. Um, and because they like coming to school, um, we almost trick them into learning. The other thing is I think teachers like Bob and most of our teachers do a lot of hands-on application type of activities as part of their, their, their classes. You can probably go and talk about like history day. And yeah, what happens is um, I know for our English department, I know they have this big unit for, uh, uh, they have this outsider unit where they start talking. They, it's, it's, it's centered around academic or the outsider books. And they, they, they create websites or they create different types of technology products. And for, and for, for the social studies department, what happened is uh, we created a, a, a school-wide history day program where the seventh grade teachers, Mr. Nakama, and Mr. Kano, and Mr. Freelive, they expose kids to the history day process, uh, understanding that it's a long process. And then the eighth grade teachers, Mrs. Wakamoto, Toyama, and Mr. Freelive, uh, we, we, we raise it to the next level where they have to create products like websites, mm -hmm. uh, performances, 10 minutes performances, a documentary. They can also do a traditional pay, uh, research paper as well as a display board. So they have many options. And I know our science department is actually um, trying to increase their uh, science fair program and have the kids do more experiments. We also have elective programs like um, graphic arts, movie. movies, um, so we have many technology-based types of uh, activities too. Yeah, and I've, you know, I've seen a, uh, several of those History Day projects and I've really been um, impressed. Uh, but more importantly, I think, I, I do know as I go through um, the list of student awards, your students do very well in the state and national competitions because mm -hmm. I know a couple of our students have uh, have won state recognition as well as national recognition. The latest thing that we're doing right now is an aquaponics uh, project. So we have a thousand gallon tank that we plan to raise um, 300 to 400 tilapia. Um, the water is recycled to mm -hmm. um, fertilize for growing bins. Um, it's run by solar and wind power. Um, the students who run the project, and it's a seventh grade core project. So there's a group of about 107 grade students led by four academic teachers that's involved in this process. Um, whatever profit they make, they can recycle it into their classes. Um, so um, it's really high tech, really sophisticated. They're also going to be working with junior achievers to start a student-led business. So they'll make business cards, brochures, learn science in terms of the propagation of fish and the plant life, um, learn about renewable energy with the solar panels. So, you know, about integrating and making learning relevant. And, 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 and they like the fact that the, it, the activities are hand smart as well as head smart. Um, you know, you know <laughs> being able to work with your hands and, and, and see almost immediate feedback in terms of a product. And you guys are able to work all of this into the standard curriculum mm -hmm. and, and students are learning the math mm -hmm. and the reading and right. all of those kinds of um, skills that are being tested as part of the yes. Hawaii State Assessment Program. Yeah. I think it, it actually hits um, beyond the standards because the standards are pretty prescribed and uh, what these activities like an eighth grade um, team, core team, they did a, a watershed, and what they ended up doing was having the kids study the water the water cycle from top to bottom, and they actually tried to do more civil or civic duty mm -hmm. activities where what can they do to protect the watershed, what they can do to conserve, and they came up the kids came up with a bunch of things that were higher than what was expected. So They took water samples of the stream that's right next to our school, mm -hmm. and they not only made a video about it, they used to re 
report the findings to the um, Honolulu Water Supply on a yearly basis. Wow. So, um, so those kind of connecting kind of activities that elevates the learning. You know, standards only set the minimum, right? Mm. That, right? That's correct. So these activities, I think, push kids to go beyond the standard to some higher level. And yeah. you think that this is an uh, important part of, of why IA Intermediate is doing so well? I mean, in the standards assessment? I think so. That, and I, I cannot overstate that. I really, you know, the heart of our kids and the quality of our faculty and staff. I mean, I, I think the most valuable resource at our school is the people resources. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I keep on telling people, and I've talked to you about this before too. I mean, I'm always amazed at the, the, the quality and the caliber of the people at, our, at the school. You know? you know, and I've been on your campus yeah. often enough to know I've. I've been at your performing arts yeah. productions. Mm -hmm. I mean, the um, th the uh, quality and engagement of not only the the mm -hmm. faculty and staff. I mean, it's really a whole school right. kind of activity to put on one of those uh, performances. Mm -hmm. And I was really amazed at the quality of the costuming, the stage presentation, all of the the um, staging activities of the props and mm -hmm. and. Um, I was just amazed that this was happening at a public school. Uh, and I think more importantly, um, I know the last performance I went to, there were kids from other schools mm -hmm. and, and other communities mm -hmm. who uh, are part of the productions mm -hmm. as well. I, I, I got to also credit our community and our parents. They have been tremendous supportive of, of the school. You know, and, and we couldn't do a lot of the things that we do mm -hmm. if we didn't get this kind of support from our community and our parents. Um, so. Um, they have been really supportive in, in, in terms of, if not, you know, intentionally in, in terms of giving things to the school, at least talking to the students to say, you know, and reinforcing the kind of values and, and the work ethic we need for the kids to embrace in order to be successful. And the, and the parents and community members have been wonderful about telling the kids, it's just, now that you're in an intermediate school, you know, you got to kind of ratchet it up. And, you know, that kind of support has been, you know, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Terrific. I mean, how do you, how do you um, make time to, to incorporate all of these things? I, I mean, you know, as I go around the state and I meet with different schools, you know, I, it seems like a lot of um, people at the schools feel like overwhelmed yeah. um, with the challenges. And, and, you know, you guys seem to be kind of taking it on and, you know, taking it up to the next level. Um, Really, it's not an option, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what's happening is I, I, I think the teachers, as well as the students and administrators, um, we realize what it takes. I mean, it is difficult. And I think everybody tries to share the burden. I'll give you an example that um, I'm on a core team, which is very helpful. Um, Mrs. Kabang, our English, my, the English teacher that I work with, she takes on half of the kids when we're working on history days, which releases me half the time to do other things. Mrs. Kabang comes in at 5 o'clock. So kids who need help in the morning. 5 a.m.? Yes. Wow. We have a lot of teachers. And I stay late, so the kids who can't come in in the morning, I will, uh, I will help during the afternoons. So I think th that happens all around our school. And it also, you know, the, the kids, when, when they're so motivated, uh, it, it's a little bit easier for teachers to say, okay. I remember one kid uh, who was working on a history day project. She wanted me to come in on Sundays. And it's like, that was, she was coming in on Saturday already. And I said, no, we can't come in on Sunday. But when they're that motivated, it, it's hard for teachers to say, you know, no, because they're so motivated. I guess it it, um, it helps that the teachers are so supportive, um, but I, I guess it becomes a big challenge when the kids get really engaged and uh, are willing to work 24-7 to, to get some of the projects completed. I'll give an example, like this Friday is the start, right? It's the last day of school before the start of fall break. So you know, you know how it is, everybody's tired, you, you, you're happy to see that the last day you go off on the week vacation, but Friday night we have something called movie on the lawn. So the teachers will be here so we can show a movie. It's free to the community and the parents. You know, we'll have a bunch of kids with their families watching free movies. We'll make popcorn, cook hamburger. And we do that what, quarterly. We do that once a quarter, you know, just to keep our community engaged with what's happening in school. That's you know? terrific. Yeah. Soul surfer. 
<laughs> Soul Surfer is the movie? Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe I'll think about that. That's Friday night. <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. So, I mean, what... I mean, if, if you could offer any advice to other schools that are trying to, to um, take the school to the next level, what, what would be your, you know, your lessons learned? Or where does it start? I mean, obviously, um, 10 or 12 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, IA Intermediate School wasn't performing as it is today. You know, do you guys have any insights about where do you start or how do you start? I mean, yeah, a lot of times when you look at a school, it's such a huge task to to try and implement a, a culture change mm -hmm. or try and get students motivated or or faculty and yeah. staff motivated. You know, I think each school has um, unique challenges. You know. Um, the clientele might be slightly different. So there's no universal um, one-size-fits-all kind of response to that kind of, you know, like. But I think for us, we started small. And, and we worked on things that we knew we could be pretty much successful on. So initially, the focus was not on the curriculum. The focus was just making the campus more attractive, you know, planting grass, um, hedges, uh, flowers, right? Mm -hmm. Painting well, our buildings. And it has made a big difference. Right. I mean, I could see that at the very beginning. You know, and, and, and so when people start to feel a little bit better about the environment, the perception was, w w we're becoming a better school. Even though maybe fundamentally the curriculum didn't change, you know, the results in assessment didn't change, but the perception was, we're a better school. And from there, we kind of branched out to, to the, the the uh, curriculum and instruction and assessment. Um, and, and we tried, our challenge was just to do one or two things successfully. But when you look over time, over 10 years, 12 years, those little things kind of add, add up. I think if you take a big chunk and, and somehow you fall short and you're not successful and everybody invested a lot of time and effort and resources and, and, and they feel like they didn't meet those goals. I, I think what happens is, you know, people get kind of disappointed and, and not as motivated, you know. So I think it's doing it in manageable chunks. I mean, we're, we're doing that process right now. We, Bob is part of a committee because we know we have to do common core um, state standards. Mm -hmm. And so Bob is with a team of how many other teachers that? About 10. 10 teachers, you know, and who has a proven track record in terms of getting kids um, to elevate their performance. So these will be our leaders that will guide us through the process in terms of how do we transition from what we do now to this new template called Common Core State Standards. You know, because they have a lot of credibility in the faculty and the staff. They have high standards in the community and with the parents because they have demonstrated they're great teachers, they put in time, effort, and resources, and they're successful in elevating kids' performance. So uh, they lead, you know, and we follow. Yeah. Bob, can you talk about, I mean, you know, there has been a lot of, um, you know, the perception of, of teachers not wanting to work or spending the time. I, I'm amazed that you have some teachers starting at, at 5 o'clock. You know, at the Capitol, we've been having this ongoing battle about increased instructional time and longer school year and all of that. And it seems like teachers at, at IEA Intermediate School regularly put in uh, a lot more hours than are required by contract. And, and can, can you talk a little bit about that? And um, I, I mean, think, why do you do it, right? I mean, because it seems like it, it's beyond what's required. Well, I think, I think the quality that Mr. Krishige looks for are f people who work hard first. And I think a lot of teachers um, do work hard. But what happens is there's a large, um, there's a great frustration in terms of um, maybe what the results are they're not seeing the results but what happens is you know teaching is an ennobling kind of profession because sometimes we don't see the the immediate results mm -hmm. it's going to be down the road and I think what happens is um, because we talked about culture a little bit earlier because we have the culture each each of our each of the faculty members we look at each other and watch we watch each other work hard and I think what happens is each teacher wants to step up and do it. And I, I'm, I'm tr I truly believe a lot of the teachers in all the schools feel that way. Um, and it's just that little twist that will get their kids to do that much more. 
and then you'll see it's, it becomes a, a success breeds success. They'll see the kids do it, so they'll start, the teachers will start doing it, and pretty soon you have that culture there. So I think there's a misperception that they think teachers don't want to put the time in. We do, but sometimes we don't, um, teachers, they don't get the respect that I think uh, teachers get what they should get because mm -hmm. we're tasked with doing so many things sometimes it's overwhelming so if we can focus on teaching I think that will help us that will help people to focus and put more time and effort into it well it's it's clear and I you know I do visit a lot of campuses and I'm I'm fortunate in in um, you know the schools in my communities uh, perform very well but clearly when I've gone to events at uh, IA Intermediate it certainly seems over and beyond I mean I um, you know, I see a whole lot of teachers there on uh, after hours and, and, you know, I'm certain that um, um, being an advisor for a club or some after school activity is really uh, not required by contract, but it, everybody's engaged. Mm -hmm. I, I guess as long as you're focusing on the, on the students and, and what happens there, I guess it makes it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. I, I um, you know, we're getting to uh, the end of our time here. So I was just, I wanted to give you uh, at least one kind of opportunity to kind of uh, wrap up and close. And, and um, you know, what would be your suggestions to? My suggestion is, if you have a child in our community, do not hesitate to send your child to our school, because I almost guarantee you, I will guarantee you, uh, your child will get a terrific education. And, it's, and you have the test scores to uh, show that. Bob, any final thoughts? I think, I think that um, at IA Intermediate, uh, um, we are very fortunate to have the people or the community of, of educators and, and administration and students and community members and legislative leaders to have, be at our school. Because um, one thing we, we fail to say is that it takes a community to educate the child, and we're very lucky at IA that we have such group, good uh, members, committee members or group members. And because of that, it's so much easier to work. And our PTSA, I can say this, Mr. Kurishige, the kids who go to History Day um, receive about, what, a thousand every year. So the support is there, and I think, well, we're very lucky to be part of IA Intermediate. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bob, for sharing a little bit about IA Intermediate. I really do appreciate all of uh, all that everybody at IA Intermediate does for our community and for our children. Uh, thank you for joining us um, on this session of uh, Senate Spotlight. Um, tune in next for uh, a focus on another community. You went over, Bob. <laughs> Sorry.